I think a first lady has to be a special kind of woman. How do you like what I've done with the place? Um, it's a joke, Debbie. Hi, I'm Todd Felstead, production designer. And I'm Cynthia Slater, set decorator. We're behind the scenes of Showtime's The First Lady. Welcome to the White House. When you open a script, everything that's occurring on screen is our responsibility. The decoration and the design has to be around the character, down to their rooms, their lamps, everything. We have three different first ladies that are being featured and they're all being shot separately. So our block, the first one was Betty Ford. And what we had to do was create the White House from scratch. Then somebody will come in and turn it into Michelle Obama's White House. And then it will turn into Eleanor Roosevelt's White House. There's a few rooms within the White House that never change. And this is one of them. We wanted to keep it at the same scale uh, as the real White House. Um, there's slight adjustments for camera. Every single piece of trim, everything was done by hand. This is one of those rooms that has actually never changed, down to the drapes. This is where they had most of the balls, the King Hussein dinner. That's where Susan had her prom. We're seeing all of Betty's life. Betty, what are you doing here? That's definitely unusual. Usually with a period piece, you have one decade that you're operating in and maybe some flashback material. We wanted you to be able to travel as an audience with the characters up the grand staircase and into the residence. So we built it as two floors, and now you have giant ramps outside for all the equipment to come up and down, which was a little bit more complicated, but it makes it worth it uh, cinematically. I hadn't planned on decorating these rooms. These popped up in the scripts a little later. So I was given five weeks to figure out these two rooms. We always joke that uh, if you asked an architect and an interior decorator to do our jobs, they would just laugh at you. Like, there's no way, there's no time, there's not enough people, there's not enough money, but somehow magically we do it. Here we are in the East Wing. This is where the First Lady does a lot of her business and works with her staff. And uh, if we go down the hall, we can see some of the things on the way. The bullpen is where a lot of her staff works on the ratification of different states, which was a big part of her storyline. The ERA has never been concerned with making women the same as men. And then we have the First Lady's office. Well, a lot of times when you see the White House on camera, you see it in bits and pieces, and it tends to have almost like a theme park flavor to it. It doesn't have a realism and authenticity that we were really striving for. We wanted you uh, to feel as an audience that you were actually here in the real White House. That just meant a lot more attention to detail that our team of art directors put together beautifully. Now, is there any room in particular? Do you like to shoot these last few images? Actually, yes. This set is another room in the White House that never changes, down to the paintings. I think everything stays the same. And it was iconic because this is where the Time magazine was shot. Yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer did such a good job yeah. in that scene. It's really fun. We're here at uh, our swing set. You have to build it in a very short amount of time, shoot it, and then wrap it in a very short amount of time to make room for the next swing set. We've been through a couple dozen swing sets uh, on the Betty block. You know, when you're reading the script, sometimes it's overwhelming. You're like, I can't do this. How am I going to do this? And then all of a sudden, you walk through everything, and you're like, oh my gosh, I got it done. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I, I think it looks pretty beautiful. <laughs> and that's a wrap. On the Betty Ford block. Hi. Welcome to the Obama White House. The year is 2015, and we're gonna give you a little tour. I'm Tony Fanning, I'm the production designer of Block Two and Three. And I'm Brian Venegas, the set decorator. When you walk into this room, the first thing you feel is how warm and inviting it is. Michelle really wanted her family to feel very comfortable here. It's an inviting space. It's about them being the first black family in the White House. The collaboration between Michael Smith, the designer, and Michelle got this incredible balance between letting you know it's the White House and who they are as a family. We decided that there would be no politics at the table. Got it? 
This is Malia's bedroom, considered one of the fun sets and playful sets in the White House. Michelle wanted both the girls' rooms to be done first, so I think in the actual White House, this is where they started, and I think it grew from there. It's really colorful and happy, and I think that's what they wanted for the girls when they moved into this house. Barack used this space as his home study, so it's a very casual space, but it's also a very dignified space. We followed the research of the real treaty room, the walls are covered with a grass cloth, and there's a beautiful border that was hand stenciled. People are very familiar with the Obama White House, so the biggest fear behind this was actually getting it right. We're gonna now head over to our other studio to see the rest of the sets. This is where Michelle and her family grew up. It's her childhood home. The original house is on Euclid Avenue on the east side of Chicago. Michelle and her family had two separate apartments, but they shared the house. Amen. Amen. Michelle is our one Cinderella. She doesn't come for money. So we were trying to show an arc through all of the interiors and then to the White House and the most prestigious. We didn't want to be too on the nose when it came to the decades. So what we did is we infused a little bit of the past into the present day. A lot of it feels like it might be the late 70s. Also, the mother and the father are smokers, so it should have a kind of nicotine finish, is what we were hoping for. This is a connecting piece to the location that we shot here in Atlanta. We have brick that's all been done by hand. We've duplicated the floor. We've duplicated the front door with all of its molding so that we have a smooth transition from being on the location into the stage set. I like to use live plants and live flowers. I think they look better on camera. The father took care of the yard. At this point, he is now gone, so we wanted to have the plants dying because no one's taking care of them and just add a little bit of a detail to that storyline. Right now, we're in Michelle and Craig's room. We're in the Michelle side. She and her brother actually shared the living room of the house, and the uncle came in and put a paneling wall up in the middle of the space. And Michelle is a very meticulous person, so her side of the space is actually kind of more tidy and put together, and Craig's side of the space is a little more guy-like, I guess you could say, and a little less particular. People really care about this project, and they really care about getting the authenticity of it right. All of this is a collaboration to get to this one place. This has been the Obama White House. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Hi, welcome back to the set for the First Lady. This is the Eleanor Block. Yeah! I think it's a little bit less presentational as the other two First Ladies, and it was a much more private residence during this time. We have a lot of maritime images around, and we use blue to help tell our story. He did love to sail and do anything by the water. Because of their complicated relationship, they both slept in their own rooms. I think that's one thing that is different from all the other administrations. Yeah, the other one is that the East Wing was built under FDR, but the First Lady didn't have a designated office because they thought she didn't need one. And so she works out of the residence. Because she uses the master bedroom as her office, this is where she slept. We wanted to stay as accurate as possible, so we put the coyote rug in here. I always take it as a reminder of her Uncle Teddy because he was such a gamesman. It's historically accurate that this bedroom was next to what she uses as her office, so we'll take you in there now. You are the husband of a wife who has a life of her own. A lot of these photos were family photos. It was important for her to have that history in her house. Eleanor started a company with two ladies, Val Kill, and she requested to have some of the furniture in the house. So we do have a few museum pieces, which we were lucky enough to get. This is a hidden door. I call it a hidden door. This leads to Hick's room, which is Eleanor's friend. This room is basically a gift to Hick from Eleanor. And the actual research is very spare. There's literally a bed, a chair, and maybe a cabinet in the room, but for television, we brought it up and uh, added some flourishes in the room. 
This is where everyone stayed when they were in Washington, D.C. You probably can tell, but this is the main foyer of the residence. We've added this front desk area that we constructed front and back. We decided to try and make it as different as possible. We went for a very rich gold color that's complemented in green and blues and reds. It's been absolutely a rewarding experience. It's been hard, but it's also been incredible, and I think the show will show that. That's a wrap of season one of The First Lady. Thanks again, guys. Thank you.